did not. So the match is pretty close. Nobody's really taking the initiative yet with, with a mark. Brian is a pitcher in softball, and that's what I said. Well, I, all right, 400 games, you must be a pitcher because you're a great camp pinballer, and he is. But he's been pressed into service for some of the other uh, positions as well. So very athletic guy, but he says he's taking this summer off from softball to be with his family after 400 games in six months. How do you, how do you play that many games? Three uh, nines, 27 through three. Good poker hands so far, three yeah, of a kind. Yeah, there you go. But not a fun shot. I mean, this is this is going to have to be a cut shot probably. But he's too far to the right. So it's a very close match. But we're very early to go. We've got four matches coming your way today. The winner of this one goes on to meet Corey Packard, who had 600 for his five-game qualifying string at Riverwalk Lanes in Amesbury. 36-32, Ryan Saltall, the number four seed, leads the soon-to-be 80-year-old Phil Clough by four. First of three strings here in Portsmouth, New Hampshire on the WON Sports Network and Canelton Bowling Network. You can like, share, subscribe, no credit card required, always free. It's on YouTube, Canelton Bowling Network. All right, so what the heck do you do with this one? <laughs> you try to fit it between the three and the 10, or, I mean, I'm sure that he's seen every spare combination known to man. You won't see a lot of these spare combinations in 10-pin, right? As no. you see Detroit growing up, right? <laughs> you will not. You get some weird ones once in a while. So he's getting a nine, and uh, for five, he's at 41. They're bowling two boxes at a time, and then switching lanes after two. So good pro bowl average. Average is about 120, somewhere at 125, give or take a few points. But that's a good scoring Candlepin, a perfect string. All spares, strikes, and tens in Candlepin. He did it. Yeah, uh, 193. 193? Yeah. Uh, you sent me that uh, you know, the other day, and I looked at it, and his worst box was a nine. And he had no double strikes. And no double strikes. Had he had one double strike, and because he pinned so well, he would have easily hit 200. 200 is rare in this game. 245 it really is. is the world record by Chris Dodge and Ralph Sam. Oh, nice try. Trying to sweep that one pin over, leaving the 10. What is Dave, still scrambling? Dave Godwin, I covered Academy 2 in the Friday Night Pro League game of the week on Canopy Mall Network. He has a 235. Very impressive number, Dave Godwin. 33-year-old, he is a beast on the lanes. He is indeed. There are more beasts than there were back in, in Phil's day. Uh, and uh, Phil is more of a finesse bowler, but I think as you get older, you, you, you go more for finesse than power. Yep. Use that experience. Nine box, 50 through six. We're in the first of three strings. One of the face, Corey Packer, the number three seed. Back to Mike Warren. Yeah, I'm still waiting for that first mark. I kind of thought that might be a strike, but nothing took out the four pin, so he'll go straight at it. Mono a pin. And he's got it for our first mark of well, the match. Don't forget, we lost an hour of sleep last night, daylight savings time, so <laughs> people are still an hour behind here. All I care is that my dog still got up at the right time, which turned out to be 7 o'clock instead of 6. So <laughs> I, I am in good good uh, frame of mind today, Paul. <laughs> I think. And there's your strike. And a, and a 10 fill, obviously. Spare strike. And there's the first jump of the match where somebody's taking the lead. 56 to 5, 66 plus 2 for the number four seed, Ryan Southall, who bowled twice in the qualifying round, had a 595, and would have lost if he didn't bowl that final roll off and got a 598. Well, as I mentioned, there was only an 11 pin spread, which that's about as narrow as it gets when you've got five bowlers. 596 for Phil Clough, who you're watching right now, and Charlie Collins, our top seed just 11 pins higher. I mean, if any of these guys had a one spare or less spare or missed a few more marks, it could have been a completely different ladder today. Yep. And Phil had to get a 139 that fifth string of the qualifier to get in as the five seed. This guy must put millions of miles on his car because he lives out in Warren. I think you're talking about me. <laughs> well, no, this is almost like this is a home match for you, a, a, a home field kind of situation because you're in Haverhill, I think, Yeah, it's right? about 35, 40 minutes away. Up, skipping a jump. There's a nice shot. There you go. Hitting the pocket. Good stuff on the ball. There's an easy shot. Well, not that anything is easy in this game, but uh, you just uh, hit between the uh, the pin and the and the deadwood, and bam! There's his first spare for Phil Clough, 79-year-old youngster. 
from Warren, Massachusetts. Been there for 58 years, 69 of the ball wow. through eight. But Ryan Southall is working a strike on lane 15 here on Canada Mobile Network and WON Sports. Well, the good news is he still has a second ball here to get the fill on his sixth box strike. All right, Mike, did you ever get a gutter ball on a strike, two gutter balls on a strike? Uh, probably. <laughs> Not that I can remember, because that's the kind of thing you don't want to remember. Yes, I know. <laughs> if it happened against Dick Lutz, he would remember. Yeah, that's very true. And it would also be a matter of record, too. We had a number of matches at Pilgrim Lanes that, I got to tell you, it, when you are being watched by some of the best bowlers in the world, because Dick and I had these grudge matches every year, it does uh, rattle you just a little bit until you get the first mark, and then you start to have a little bit more fun. Eight net strikes, 74 through six, nine, 83 through seven, first to three. Well, he gets good action off the wall, doesn't he? And now I I guess that's not a, yeah, that looks like those pins are, are in play. Uh, very makeable spare. He has so much good stuff on the ball. I guess if he can split the deadwood, do you think that's the way you, you want to shoot oh, yeah. this one? Ah, oh, so close. Yeah, it went maybe just a little bit too far left. Boy, like I said in the interview, he's gone up almost nine points in his average in one year. He's come up that much? Yeah. Wow. And somehow he got by, didn't hit the, uh, he did not hit the pin that was in the gutter, which of course would have negated that 10 box. 10 box, 93 through eight here in the first of three. Phil Clough down 24, but on a spare, can cut it into the teens. Yeah, he needs to have a couple of them here because I, I don't think Ryan's gonna, gonna go away very quietly. Not a fun spare. It's actually a, 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 a spare that you see in, in 10 pin with the, with the sweeping hooks they have these days, but of course you don't get the deadwood to play. Oh, oh, thought he had it. Spare seven, 76 through eight. Right now down 17, he have a total pinfall is all that matters with three strings. And that is a nine box. The winner goes on to meet Corey Packard of Sutton, Massachusetts. He's, Corey's a great guy, on and off the lanes. He's a great ambassador, world champion. And we'll see uh, Nick Norcross, number two seed later on. Yes. Also world champion for Academy Lanes. Yeah, a couple teammates could be could be bowling each other. Yeah. I was I was checking that out. Yeah, a lot of titles in this in this ladder. I didn't bother counting them up, all the various tournament wins and titles and singles and doubles and teams, but. Uh, I would say dozens and dozens of uh, championships between these five bowlers that you're going to see over the next several hours. Well, the one to watch out for, the Terminator, Charlie Collins, just 22 years young, and that guy kills it. He just he's a, he can put a punch in a hurry. He's such a great guy, too, on a plane. Great example for the young bowlers. And he is 57 years younger than Phil Clough. <laughs> That's our range. A very small range for pins in the qualifying, 11, but... 57, Phil is 79, and Charlie, 22. Phil, tough string, seven mark, 92, and a considered fast house. There's a strike for Ryan Southall. Well, he's starting to pull away. Three marks for OB, $25 in bonus money, each consecutive mark, he had 25, $100 for a 400 series for three games, $500 for a triple strike, and $200 to the runner up in this match. The winner moves on to play number three. Almost a double there. So let me ask you this. Does the uh, string of marks continue into another game, or does it end right here? It ends here. Okay. Kind of thought so. A spare on strike. And hey, Ryan, sizable lead here in the first. On fire. Looking to fill it up. 123 and a ball in the 10th. On the nose, strike! Wow! wow. <laughs> they just crumbled, didn't they? And a 133 start for the young man from Raleigh, Massachusetts, the softball player and fishing guy. After one string, 133, 92, a 41 pin lead for Ryan Salfall over Phil Clef on Kenneth Mullen Network and WON Sports. Back with our second string in just a moment. Yep, we're, we're still live, folks. We'll be right back as soon as we reset for string two. We'll keep it right here. And just so you know, you're watching Candle Pins for Cancer. Ladder Series on WON Sports and Candle Bowling Network. 
to donate via Venmo, CandlepinsForCancer.com. Go to Venmo, type in Candlepins for Cancer, or go to CandlepinsForCancer.com. Follow the links to Venmo. Donate any amount. Help my bowl is going through cancer treatments. CandlepinsForCancer.com. Any amount is greatly appreciated. Second string about to begin. Ryan Southall will lead off this string. You know, on after lane 16. I'm sorry. After what he told me about playing 400 softball games last year, I would have thought maybe he would just change his name to Ryan Softball instead of Southall. Softall. And he is still hitting that head pin with some regularity, and the pins just scatter. I mean, he hasn't had too many punch outs so far. And too bad, like you said, this could not continue over. That would be a good fun rule change, wouldn't it? It would. The purists wouldn't like that. Let's, let's, let's talk to, uh, to Al and see if he's <laughs> into that. The spirit has stopped the second string. Ryan's hope. There you go. Well, I was just saying, uh, you were talking to somebody else that with all the 400 softball games he played last year, shouldn't he change his last name to softball? <laughs> Another strike bid nine. What a nine drops. Man, he is on a roll with a 40 pin lead. Uh, well, now even more than that, 51 pins or about 50. Charlie, Charlie Collins has six nine, nine drops in that final spring that qualifying round to get to number one. And robbed by the wood that time, roadblock. That's annoying. You put the ball where you want it, but the pin has other ideas. I think you're talking about me. Oh. <laughs> well, take I get the line. <laughs> That's a Paul Grant special. Miss the second, make the third. Spare 9 10, 29 through 2 here in the second of three. Portsmouth, New Hampshire, Bowl Rama on Kenneth Muller Network, WN Sports. Corey Packard waiting in the wings. The number three seed plays the winner. Total pinfalls, all that matters. Phil has plenty of time. He has championship pedigree through a 139, that final qualifying round, that final string to get to number five. Back to Mike Warren. Well, he has uh, many, many house records. When you bowl this many years and you uh, are at the level he is, you will have your name on the wall of many bowling centers around New England because you were the top bowler ever at that particular house. I don't know how many of them have stood, and sadly, a lot of the bowling centers aren't standing any longer, but uh, he is just an amazing human being, a good guy, and good enough to be on the show today. It's a game for all ages. A skill game like golf, a lot of comparison to golf. Ten pinners have a hard time adjusting because it makes you work to test your patience, to test your will, to test your spirit. And I, I'm one of those people that made the, the switch. Oh, wow. What it's a great shot. tied 1-1, the wild sweepstakes. The 3-6-10 went down for Phil Clough. That was a great shot. We're back to the fireballer now, Ryan Southall. From Raleigh, Mass. He's up 10 right now, minus the Phil from Phil. Well, he uh, went to the left side and he's got double wood times two. Got the one, the three, the five, the six, the nine, and the 10, but got some wood to help him out. It did not, and he's still got the three, nine, 10. I'm sorry, the, uh, the three, five, six. Don't forget, we're an hour behind today. Daylight savings time. I do it all the time, too. I tell Jeremy the same thing in the podcast. I, I know the pin number. I just say I'm wrong. I know what the pin's numbers are. I just say I'm wrong. That's the mouth going before the brain as usual. Well, I built a career on that, so don't feel bad about it, Paul. <laughs> I don't feel so bad now. No, you, sh you should 52 not. 52 years plus in the radio. Yeah, that that's true, and I'm still doing it on a part-time basis because I enjoy it. Kind of like that. With full-time pay, right? Uh, <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> no. But that's okay. As long as I got my daughter through college, that was the main thing. Pay the bills, have a little left over. That's, that's all I need. Another nine drop for Ryan Southall. Wait for the wood to settle down. And Caleb up in bowling, you must wait for the wood to come to complete standstill. That's, that's a good point because uh, I, I think a lot of people don't know that. Because uh, uh, how many people do you think regular bowlers have ever read the rule book, if they can even find one? Tommy Hirsch is great at reading the rule book. Another Paul Grant special, never a good time for that. Missed the second, make the third. Missed opportunity, 10, 48 through four. Can Phil Clough take advantage as Ryan shakes his head, disbelief? Well, well, he shakes his head, but he shouldn't get too terribly upset, and it looks as though 
Al Johnson wants to wait until the ball on lane 15. Ball is never satisfied. Taken from you know. <laughs> <laughs> What are 10, ball, 10, 10 pin balls are satisfied with the 300 game? I, you know, I don't know because so many of them are being bowled now. It's not the special achievement that it once yeah. was. Yeah. You can spend the night on YouTube or on, on some of the live streams that are going on, and it's just just video after video of the 12th ball of people getting their 300 game. It's like, I know what's going to happen. Why are you showing me this? Phil, three in the spare, 22 through two in the hole that time. He's a big out, seven standing. Well, he's been given a chance because Ryan has uh, uncharacteristically gone three boxes without a mark. Uh, and he's uh, not real happy with himself. I think he's still in pretty much control of this game. But if Phil puts together a couple and Ryan continues the way he's going, it will be a match again. 29 through 3 for Phil Clough. That was a strike ball. Yeah. And two pinners go about 51% and three pinners without wood. For Pro Bowl, stats by Canop and Bowling Network. And there, there is there is the most annoying thing about Canop and Bowling right there. The pins are so far apart; they look close, straight on. When you look at the side, you see how far apart they are. Yes. There's a picture uh, in I think the Florence Greenleaf Canop book that came out in 1980 that somebody took uh, an overhead shot of a rack of pins, putting as many Canop pin balls as you could in there. And I don't remember how many it was. It was a lot. Yeah. 10 box, 39 through 4, down 9. Now Ryan Southall on lane 16 has the 1 of the 9. Back to Mike Warren. All right, I think this one is uh, is not a gimme, but I think he's going to get it. Well, okay, I, I'm sorry that I was o wrong. 0 for, for 1. <laughs> my, my prediction was not good. My assessment was that it was not a gimme, and the 9 pin stands alone, thumbing its nose at Ryan, who is now 4 marks uh, four boxes in a row without a mark 57 half halfway through his match he's just waiting for phil the match is still not terribly close that we are almost at the halfway mark after this box each uh, each set of bowlers will bowl three strings as you know the winner moves up the ladder to the seed that was one position higher than him and there is the four horsemen the one the two the four and the seven uh, he's lost his touch, Paul, don't you think? He's go to Midas. Oh. Oh, Monroe, Monroe Muffler. <laughs> I'm dating myself. No one knows what Midas is nowadays. Are there even muffler shops anymore? There's still a few around. I go to Monroe. Nine for Ryan, 66 through six. After a spare nine, shut down the last five. It's still throwing a good ball. Well, Phil needs to uh, start pounding the head pin which he didn't pound it, but he hit it, and he's got the, uh, the the dinner bucket on the right side, as some people call it, or the diamond, and then the 4-7 on the left. Just a little bit too direct. Almost impossible to make that shot without a little bit of luck or perhaps a little more velocity. Phil bowled poorly in that first string. He told Alvin he was retrieving that, that wall of wood, and he said, are you going to replace me? <laughs> oh, really? That's a little harsh. No replacements here, obviously. The six seed is the standby person, by the way, if someone gets injured or can't make it for Who them. is? The sixth person, if they couldn't make it, would be in, would be Norm Pelletier in a, in a situation. Yeah, I was wondering about that. Is he here? No, but oh. <laughs> people said they're all going to be here, so we tell people you're on standby as a six seed. But do you have to be here before the actual day begins? You can't say jump into second seat or something. No. If no, yeah. it's never happened yet that I know of, so strange things can happen, though. That's true. Phil Clough, 48 half, trying to get going here in the second half of this match. And yeah. this is what I call a banana split. You take a banana with a big knife, you chop it in half, one goes one way, one goes the other way, hence a banana split. And I could use one after this match today. Six blocks, 54 through six. Right. Not the pound, but the taste. Uh, let's not talk about food this early. We just got started. <laughs> they don't sell banana splits of shenanigans, please. <laughs> Great job by Bob Allen and Barbara Dieros here. Ryan, there strike. There you go. What was that? That was a collapse ball. 76 plus two through seven here in the second of three. So five boxes without a mark. Comes back big with a strike. 
thinking now again of perhaps putting a few marks together for some bonus money that Paul told you about. Tough leaf, yeah, Bob. The one, three, seven, ten. Wood rolling away. You have to wait for that to stop. Boy, he is pulling with so, so much confidence lately. He's been killing it all year. Good try there. Almost pulled it off. Seven pin remains. Another big fill in the strike. Nine again on a fill. 85 through seven. And a perfect 10 box. I mean, he's probably the least uh, experienced bowler that we have here today. His high single is 175. High triple is 435. And his high 10 is 1230. Nothing to sneeze at there. And he throws a 2.7 pound Paramount bowling ball. It is high five, by the way, of 662. It's kind of the Kellen Fisher Cancer falling from out here in Portsmouth a ladder or so ago. It's Scott Lapier won the whole ladder last time, going from five all the way to the top. Oh, almost pulled it off. All right, back to Mike Warren. All right, you just want to you just want to cheer for for Phil Clough here, who's who's having a tough day, coming in as the fifth seed, and he will walk by the seven pin into the channel, getting a nine box, 63 through seven. Uh, it would take quite an effort on his part and a complete collapse on Ryan's part uh, the way we stand right now. What's, what's the pin difference here? Huge. Yeah. Don't count Phil Clough out though. Like no, say, you know, 139, no, no, no. Get in the fifth spot. Anybody that's got any experience knows you do not count this guy out. There's a spare. I was watching some old uh, videos on YouTube yesterday with Phil from the Let's Go Bowling show. Now, I didn't grow up here, and it wasn't on the air when I, when I moved here. Actually, it was. I take that back. I don't know if it was available in my area, but I was watching a match that he had against, uh, I forget who it was, 1987 at Canal Lanes. And his style has not changed all that much in the last 35 years. He must, must be big, big cool in the game, game fan. He, he likes to get, get down, down on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Another missed single pin for Ryan. Pin uh, his ball kind of ricocheted back off the right side, kick back, and uh, thought maybe it would take out that pin. We'll build it against Corey Packett if he advances. Not going to make them all, obviously. Another Paul Grant special missed the second, make the third of 10. He's at 105 through nine. He's thinking I should be at 130 at least right now. Yeah, he had a, a couple of, uh, I don't want to call them careless shots, but a couple that perhaps he should have had. One thing that's difficult about this game is the fact that there is no oil pattern, which is why Bob Allard could just run out on the lay like that. But this game is much tougher than it looks right here, and sometimes you just have those off days. Another nine drop. Yeah, that, that's a good point. You know, it, it, it's it's horrible as a 10 pin bowler to pick up your ball it's just got loads and loads of oil on it i know that's the state of the game today uh you don't get that in candlepin it, it, it's a, a more simple yet complex game in another way and this time he gets it for a spare oh uh, looking at a uh, possible 125 game af after his opening 133. No, he, he could be looking at a 400 triple today. Al Johnson doesn't want to pay $100, though. He may have to negotiate that. Oh, for the 400, yeah. <laughs> Al may go bankrupt with the $100 for one of the series. Scott Lapierre gave him fits. He got $700 of bonus money the last letter series. Got a Sanford Bowl around Sanford, Maine. But it was good for the ratings. Let's look at it that way. Yeah. Ryan's fill was five, by the way, 120. Second string. Giving him what, about 253 two, for two? Yeah, 253 it is. All right, a bunch of pins. Average. Bunch of pins that can help Phil here. There you go. All right. So he can at least hit 100 here as an improvement from his last string. If you get three marks in a row, $25 in bonus money. If you get continuation, $25 added to each consecutive mark after that. There you go. Look who woke up. Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> Daylight savings time has officially ended. <laughs> That's right. All right. 
Phil. So strike on spare. He gets if he gets another strike, he's in the 120s. He was at 63 through seven, a spare five, a spare strike, 108 plus two in the tenth. So what were we saying about don't cop this guy out? Only a full wood. Yeah. All right. Shades of the old Phil Clough showing up here late in game number two. There's still some work to do in the third string, though. Nice finish, nine, Phil. 117. That puts him at 209. Ryan Southall, 253. Phil Clough, 209. Paul Grant, Mike Warren, Greg Guia, back with a third and final string in our first four matches today on Kenneth Mullen Network and W on Sports. Folks, the Candle Pits for Cancer qualifying rounds come to Sanford Bowl Rama this Tuesday. Weather pending, March 14th, 11 a.m. Thursday, March 16th, 11 a.m. Saturday, March 9th, 18th, March 18th, it'll be 9.30 a.m. and 3 p.m. due to the Rock and Bowl from 12 to 2. And Sunday, March 19th, 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. And a second Saturday, March 25th, 9.30 and 3. Men and women, come on down, main bowlers, women bowlers, after the qualifying rounds are over, individual scores for the first time ever, Mike, a mixed ladder top five show, April 16th at Sanford Bowl Rama. Sanford Main. Is that the one I'm going to be yeah. working with yep. you? Oh, yes. I can't wait. Yep. So, ladies, sign up. Let's go, main bowler. Let's go, ladies. So, a mixed ladder, but it's singles, right? Singles and they're qualifiers. And a mixed ladder, one with one, two with two, three with wow. three, four with four, five I with five. I look forward to that. Yep. That's what I love about what you're doing with this show, is you're putting in all different combinations and permutations of uh, singles and doubles and ladders and everything else. Uh, he didn't deserve that, but he's on the head pin, and that's the important thing, which helped him get to that last string, which was uh, 117, cutting the lead to 44 pins. So the $80 entry fee to roll off at Stanford Bolarama, unlimited shifts allowed. Register candle pins with a 4 cancer.com, candle pins number 4 cancer.com. You can also donate via Venmo. CandlePinsforCancer.com. CandlePin Bowlers helping CandlePin Bowlers going through cancer treatments. Please do your part today. CandlePinsforCancer.com via Venmo. Thank you for your support and generosity. Greatly appreciated. We've paid over $26,000 to CandlePin Bowlers and relatives going through cancer treatments. 1000 this week to two families. Wow. And the WOW shirts are, are kicking butt. About 450 shirts have sold now, helping nine families alone just from proceeds from WOW shirts. $10 for each high quality Wow shirt goes to the Kemp Bowler charity. Back to Mike Warren. I wear my Wow shirt probably at least once a week. We got the new version with the bowling pins, and I get a new one today. Oh, I can wow do that. Wow 2.0. I can do that. Shout out to Frank DeLuca Valley Chef for making those. Do you have a, a display for folks that come into a bowling oh, yeah. today? Yeah. Linda Sargent's here selling raffle tickets. And oh, wow all right. shirts also. All right, so uh, a couple of 10 boxes for the uh, accurate Phil Clough here today. Uh, but he's going to need, uh, you know, at least four more marks than Ryan gets this game to have a, a realistic chance. But it can be done. Ryan Sothall from Rowley, Massachusetts. Big softball player, and he uh, enjoys fishing as well. And uh, he's a nice guy. And he uh, he made me feel bad, not on purpose, uh, when he said, oh, yeah, I, I grew up watching the show Cattle and Stars and Strikes when I was 10 and you were doing the show. So I do appreciate that. His dad got him started in the game, and now he's uh, quite a remarkable competitor. I think still pretty early in his career because he's got a lot more that he's going to do, especially if he takes some time off this summer from all the softball. If he takes some of that energy and puts it into his uh, bowling game after all those years of softball and all those games last year, over 400, then uh, he is uh, going to improve even more quickly than he has in the last year. And the four pin, or the seven pin does not go. The four pin will not go. Got a plank right in front of it. So they should be tied after two boxes here in game number three for the 44 pin lead for Ryan Southall. Time is running out for the great Phil Clough. 
Yes, indeed. Our current mark statistics right now, seven marks to five in Ryan Southall's favor. So only two marks different, but you see the power of the pinning. Only eight pins left standing for Ryan Southall of Bills 25, so there's a difference being generated there as well. Greg, you make a very good point because when you look at how close the five bowlers were today in the qualifying ladder, then you realize exactly what you just said, pins do matter. And that was a great shot from Phil Clough. He'll take that spare. He needs a, a bunch more. As I said, he needs at least four more spares than Ryan to have a chance. Yeah, so uh, they fell with a what, 206 is his high, uh, his high game. But I think more impressive, though, than that is the fact that he had the house records in so many places over the years. The 125 is best year ever for a season average. He bowled wooden pins back in the old days, too. Uh, yeah, I, I think most of his career has been with the, the current pins, but he did bowl with the laminated uh, right, the plastic, pl yeah. plastic yeah. on the right, wood. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's too bad that he definitely needed makeable shots like that to have any kind of a chance against Ryan Southall. Well, the Bolarama here in Portsmouth filling up today on this beautiful Sunday as we uh, tape this uh, broadcast and, of course, stream live. Special welcome to those on WON Sports Network and on Canop and Bowling Network. Please share this match with your friends and family. Talk about the great game of Canop and Bowling. Come out to New England and visit Canop and Center, mainly in Massachusetts, Maine, and New Hampshire, other places as well, and in eastern Canada. Well, this is like the best thing for Canopin Bowling to get some exposure because anybody can watch this anytime for free and then they come to New England and they want to find a Canopin Bowling Center. I'll give you an example. Uh, Eve Plum, who played Jana on the Brady Bunch, goes to Riverwalk Lanes every year when she vacations. So she loves it. And when you get here, you get bitten by the bug. Yeah. Nine for Ryan, 29 through three in the final string of the match. Corey Packett waiting for the winner here. The third seed. You have 160 in that first ring to set the tone for his 600 qualifying score. At Riverwalk Lanes, Ainsbury Mass. And some consider a tough house. Uh, well, I do. I would say it's one of the toughest I've, I've bowled at. Not that I'm really, uh, you know, a good barometer for it, but, you know, I've bowled enough that I can tell. And when those guys are averaging 120 for that day, yeah, that's pretty impressive because most of their averages are under 120. Yeah. Ryan Southall, 9, 38 through 4 open. Phil Clough up 7 in the string. Cuts the lead on a 37 match. But again, he's, he's, mark out. Yeah, he still needs four marks uh, more than what Ryan gets the rest of the way. And he can't miss shots like this that are uh, very makeable. Can't lose that opportunity. It's the one, the three, and the six, and he's going to go too far to the left. Your object is to go between the one and the three for the best percentage shot of that. I don't know what it is for the pros, but. 51% on the average pro based on the old channel five. Right. Second of Bob Lee, that's that. Phil Club was a pin boy also growing up. Yeah, he said, I think in 1957. So he'd have been about 14, if my math is correct. He has the Palmer Bowl record of 195 for high single, 466 high triple, both in the same night. The high five in Munson lane, 733. And there are a lot of good bowlers out in Western Mass, I want to tell you. Oh, yeah. Al uh, Johnson was from Western Mass also. Yeah, the great Charlie Jutras, uh, Danny Murphy. Uh, you talked about uh, Palmer, and uh, he bowled at the same place. That's where Phil Clough bowled, and that uh, Danny Palmer uh, grew up there. Of course, sadly, he passed away a little over a year ago. Current bowler Richie Myrick, a great bowler in Western Mass also. I'm not sure where Western Mass begins. Is it Worcester? Is that where we start to consider it Western Mass? I, I wasn't good at geography. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, but nobody's ever told me where the Western part, you know, territory begins for the bowlers. Unlike Columbus, I'm still trying to discover America. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you will in an hour because you lost an hour of sleep last night, so. <laughs> Every night. Phil <laughs> <laughs> Clough, 64 through six, Ryan Southall. You control now a spare. How many nights of the week are you out covering bowling and, and raising money for campaigns for cancer? I raise uh, about four hundred twenty dollars just in Scarborough, Mike Walker's house, Big 20, the Pearson Classic. It was a great, great festive crowd. They, do, they donate in Maine really well. We love going to Maine for that reason. 
and they just really good shoot up there. It's a different world up there, and and um, look at that quarter whisker. So one, that's two actually. One, the one that you don't see too often, the three and the five, two in the fill, 50 through five. Yeah, Maine is really good to us up there. It's a different world up there. Very nice Boy, up there. They, they do support the, the cause, don't they? They support the cause greatly up there. Yeah. Mike Walker's terrific proprietor, owner. And the Maine president of the association also from Maine, Russ Nelly Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, won a 50 50 raffle with the $93 in the pool. So, uh, shout to the Maine owners up there as well. Owen Martin, a terrific guy. And we'll see Owen Sanford. Martin this week. Owen yep. Martin and OJ. We'll see OJ Thursday night on Facebook on Candle Ball Network. Regular league match, but he's a 118 league bowler. He's got Lapia Bowls there also. Sanford Bowler, Rama, Sanford, Maine. Home of the next roll off starting this Tuesday. Well, Phil Clough just uh, plodding along here. You don't see too much emotion. He's been at this game too long. It's been uphill the whole time, and it's getting to the point now where it will be mathematically impossible. Even though he does have to leave this game. Prove me wrong, Phil. <laughs> uh, he's very gracious in defeat, obviously. Oh, That's something you learn with age, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah, some people never learn it, though, but you're right. They call him Tough Clough, right? People want to talk to me when they lose. I, I understand that. <laughs> Good, great guy on and off the lanes. Absolutely, and is, uh, he's gotten more accurate in this string. I mean, you, you mentioned he has the advantage here, and he said no box worse than nine in this string. Thanks, Greg. Close from going over 60 years. That's a tough one. So that 193 string we were talking about, the perfect game with the plastic pins. Spare, strike, spare, strike, spare nine, five spare nines in a row. Spare eight, 193. That's a perfect game in Candlepin. All 10 spears. But you strikes. always need at least a double strike to hit 200. And uh, he, he never, I mean, he must have come so close. If he's if he's dropping nine every time, he, he must have come very close to a double or a triple. Nice he, shot there across he, the lane at the seven. And like Corey Packett, the winner of this match, he's a duck pin bowler also. And enjoys hiking and kayaking. Always in good shape. And uh, duck pin mainly in the mid-Atlantic mid states is one in, uh, in Bill Ricca, Mass, also. Uh, Bill Ricca and yeah. one Collins in North, Chel Home. North Chelmsford. Yeah. Uh, used to be one in Tewksbury right there off of 495 at, uh, at Route 38. It was a split pin, house. Ten now pins. It's, yeah, well, it's not physically there anymore. It's yeah. uh, the, the new uh, newer bowling center is up about a mile from the uh, interstate. Oh, what a shot that was. That wow. was a beauty. Pretty much putting the icing on the cake, I think we can safely say, huh, Paul? What kind of what kind of frosting do you uh, like? Buttercream, please. Yeah. So I'm really, <laughs> I'm really dying for spum. I love spumoni. I wish you would just stop talking about food today. <laughs> I mean, I'm a foodie, but come on. I'm no Scott Zolak. I don't talk about a lot. <laughs> Scott Zolak. No, you're not, because you don't talk over me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that! It bounced near the lane. Another spare, back to back, going for bonus money. So Evan, Phil Clef yeah. will get two hundred dollars for the one arc today. He'll get twenty-five in bonus money. Mike Warren will finish this up here. All right, here we go. We got the uh, pin in the gutter being removed by Bob. Phil Clef now stepping up on lane fifteen for boxes number nine and ten, and that was a great shot, right into the one-three pocket. The five and the seven remain, and that. Uh, that pin just needs to get a little bit more over to the right uh, to give him a little bit better shot. Uh, ball deflected. It looked like it was going to go. Seven pin remains. He'll hit 100 in this game. Oh. So he's at 93 through nine. His games were 92, 117, and uh, should should hit 100 here, just to get his 300 triple. Now that was a good shot and a strike for Phil Clough, and I believe he did that last game in the 10th frame as well, as I recall. All right, so now he can put a few more pins in the total column, but not enough to win today against Ryan Southall of Raleigh, Mass. 
A double! No! Oh, Mike, we're offering three. <laughs> we're offering five hundred dollars for three strikes in a row. That would have been quite a way to go out. We he'd be buying us drinks, wouldn't he? With that, with a five hundred dollar payday. <laughs> All right, the ball is still on the lane, spinning around. You know, I tell you, when there's no worse feeling when you're having one of those games, I mean, Phil pulled admirably, of course, no of harm meant, but sometimes you just want to get off the lane as fast as possible. You're down to just one more pin you can get, <laughs> no. and there's a ball delay because yeah. you, you have to go down there and get the ball off the and it was And it was nearly a strike. And this is Bob's day off because Bart Baderos, the only had great owner on vacation. Bart a Channel 5 bowler also. I thought something was missing. I said, where is Bart? I saw Mary Lynn, <clears throat> co-owner, wife. We'll talk to the bowlers before we sign off. Get ready for our, we'll sign up after this and get ready for our next match in a few minutes and later on on WON Sports. Thank you to those watching on Canada Mobile Network. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, get notified when we go live. Canada Mobile Network on YouTube. All right, with all that wood, how did he miss that? <laughs> Incomprehensible at times. So it's a 321 triple for Phil Clough. Not bad considering he had uh, for his first string a 92. So not a bad day for the young man from Warren. One That's twelve third string. Right, Mike, take, take us away, Mike, down the stretch. Nice guy. All right, here we go. This is uh, last couple frames for Ryan Southall. And got himself a three cluster on the left and the 10 pin on the right. Got some wood out there. He could spin them around and deflect them and pr perhaps make this one. 94 through 8 right now, going for bonus money. Probably wanted to go a little bit further left on that, leaving the 7 10. Shouldn't we have some kind of an award for making the 7 10 without, a, without pins? Left ass Alfie. Yeah. All right. One more box. His previous strings, 133, 120. This will be his lowest of the day. Well, maybe not. I mean, if he gets a mark, he could exceed his 120. But he's looking to be around 370. And uh, took out a few on the right-hand side. The whole back row is gone except for the seven. And the 37-year-old will meet Corey Packer next. Well, there's shot. a nice shot. So he will perhaps tie his last game or exceed it. I'm sorry, he had a 120 game. So he's hoping to get 123. And a triple in the 370s. There you go. Nice eight, Phil, for a 121. An outstanding series of 374. Quite an impressive number, a 128 average for the 114 league bowler on fire. Can he save some of the next match is the question. That is the big question because Corey Packard uh, knows his way around the lanes for sure. All right, we'll interview the Wolves next on Canada from Wall Network and WON Sports. Welcome back to Kenilpin Mall Network and WON Sports. Kenilpin's for cancer. Phil Clough, he had a good finish, a tough first string. Ryan Salpo put you in a big hole to start with, but very gracious in defeat, as always. He threw a good ball overall the last two strings. I started off slow, but uh, yeah, it was fun, though. And I'm glad I was here, and I hope to be back uh, when I made. You have $200 for uh, being fifth, and you'll get $25 in bonus money also. $225. Not bad for three strings of bowling. Well, better than the minimum wage, right? Yes. All right. Congratulations. Happy early birthday, turning 80 in May. Thank you. We'll see you in the Sanford Roll-Offs next week. Very good. Bill Clough. Mike Warren with the winner, Ryan Southall, moving on to face number three seed, Corey Packard. You pretty much were in control all day today. Was there any time when you were feeling any nerves at all? or I mean, the first ball. <laughs> first ball, right? Yeah, the first but, ball. But, I mean, you're a competitive softball player, yeah. so you're pretty much used to always, you know, having the pressure on, yes. right? 100%. So, you told me uh, before we went on the air that you played 400 softball games last year? Yes. Seriously? Yes. I'm going to Google that when I get home. <laughs> you get it. It's, it's tough. We play a lot. All right, so let me ask you this, because you're still getting to be a better bowler. Yeah. I, I know that you feel you can get better. If you 
take some of that energy and effort and, and put some more time in on candle pins away from softball. Is that going to help you? I think so. I plan on doing that a lot this year. I'm taking weekends off this year for my kids and for bowling so I can focus more on bowling than softball. Well, uh, you got Corey Packard next, so your hands will be full, my yes. friend. 100%. I'm kind of nervous, so we'll see what happens. All right, thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. Okay, Mike Warren. So Ryan Self, on number four seed, advances to play. Number three seed, Corey Packard next. Phil Cuff, great effort today. For Greg Guia, Mike Warren, Paul Grant, Samson. For now, we'll see you later on on WON Sports Network, and we'll see you in a few minutes on Canopy Bowling Network. Thank you.